Step into the ring, Tony. Remember this. You've proven them wrong before. This is your time. Your moment. Go and conquer the world. For CCTV, looking on to the S63, I've got a black to be a geek and the spider to dominate the street. He got me looking at the crossbow, feeling weak at the knees at the thought of a not guilty plea. I've been avoided in the courtroom. I'm God made out of prey, God's the only one to just pray. Tell them that I need a uniform. Snow choke on the road, I feel wanted like a young Pablo. Got the safety deposit box now. The biggest one around, they only deal with the 50 pound notes. I was gonna be a robber. Now I'm wearing all the best clothes. I use my fingerprints to get into the boat. This is my for your soul. Me, I'm bringing back the cartel. I need a house on millionaires, bro. Be careful what you wish for. You do not want none of this war. What you clenching up your fist for? This is about to be a real storm. I was gonna shoot it to the harbor. But I could hear them chatting, blah, blah. You better bring your body armor. Cause this is about to be some drama. 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 Oh my lord, some drama. This is about to be some drama. This is about to be some drama. This is about to be some Picture me sitting in the black cave on a dark night. One screen just for the clothing design. She can really get militant if they violate. Just no backing down is not in my DNA. Got the cabinet handmade for the smoke grenade. Can't see into the room like a cloudy lemon. Shit, they dealing with this. And if you must know, it's a dangerous game that I play. One of the twins got nicked. The others on the run trying to live. Them mom was in the ocean swimming with the big fish. When you live in tax free, the judge doesn't like it. Let me say a little prayer for the kids. Kept it moving on my fake friends. Dead silence, never give a statement. Let them watch me from the outside on the pavement. Mine don't need witness intimidation. Be careful what you wish for. You do not want none of this war. What you clenching up your fist for? This is about to be a real storm. I was gonna ship it to the harbor. But I could hear them chatting, blah, blah. You better bring your body armor. Cause this is about to be some drama. This is about to be some. 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 Oh my lord, drama. This is about to be some drama. This is about to be some drama. This is about to be some drama. Oh my lord. The vocal stylings of Bugsy Malone, Dave, Bugsy getting this Malone. Manchester crowd fired up. And now, making his entrance to the ring, the fighting part of Liverpool.
Here comes, comes the fan. The the bomber. Dave, we know very well that Tony Bellew played the role of pretty Ricky Conlon in the 2015 movie Creed. But it's his real life Rocky story over the past five years that has endeared him so much to these fans ever since that 2013 loss in Canada to Adonis Stevenson for the light heavyweight title. Got knocked out and began a reinvention that has led to a 10-0 run, moving up two weight classes, avenging a loss to Nathan Cleverly, winning a cruiserweight title, and coming in twice as the underdog to knock out former champion David Hay. Two stoppages in a row of David This has Hay. been a Cinderella story in which he's rewritten his own legacy. And you want to talk about the last fight of his career going into the toughest challenge, moving down in weight to make 200 pounds for this one. Wow, you can get those goosebumps because you know how important it is. He said, it's not about the money. I could have fought anybody else for big money. This is about knowing that I can do this on this level in the face of this kind of challenge. A pro since 2007. We talked about the loss to Cleverly in 2011. Then wins over Chalemba for the WBC Cruiserweight Championship in 2016. Got off the deck to do it. And that's been a theme. The thing is, look, there are things that separate fighters at this level, Dave. And you know coming in, you've read the quotes. Bellew has said, I don't have the same skills as this man. By the way, pretty much nobody else has the same skills of Alexander Usyk. But you know what Tony Bellew has? Heart and a self-belief that is both intoxicating and dangerous. It's what I call magic. He believes in himself so much, he's able to elevate himself to the type of performances that even bespells the odds makers. And believe me, he's a heavy underdog in this fight for a good reason, but you can never count out the bomber or anyone else this mentally tough. He's in there now with a nice long career. Says this is it, but we'll see. Cinderella streak indeed. You have to love a fight with this much at stake, this type of atmosphere, and both guys saying, that's the toughest opponent I've ever faced in my career. So get in, Tony Bell, you, you've deserved this. Well, you know where the crowd is. And now please welcome Usyk's not even there yet. The reigning and defending undisputed champion, Alexander. So here comes the all business. Pusik is 15 and 0 with 11 knockouts. In a word, in a word to describe Usyk for anyone else not familiar with this southpaw, it's 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 what? It's magician. It's wizardry. It's the ultimate craft. You like a good steak dinner, Dave? There's levels to this in a steak dinner. I'm yes. sure you know a few good spots where the steak is just that level different. That's the equivalent of this guy's fighting skills. It does not get any better for a big man to be this quick, this dynamic, this creative. He's this a relentless. special fighter who, by the way, Dave, his goals don't end right here. This is the beginning of an exit plan for him at age 31 that he says, up next, Anthony Joshua, after that, unifying all four heavyweight championship belts. After that, retirement and walking away and saying, I have done my best. Should he accomplish that, you will be looking at an all-time legend in the yellow and blue. Well, what a set of goals. But that's been the cruiserweight division holder's goal forever. It was formulated in the early 1980s, and the big name in the beginning was Carlos De Leon for many years. Now you have a dominant guy who unified the titles in just 15 fights. Beat Bredis in one of them, 115-113, 115-113, and a 114-114 draw. First title in 2014, then I mentioned the win over Glavatsky, which was an impressive one. He has stopped nine straight foes. Look, this 2018 that he's had with this World Boxing Super Series is unbelievable. Should he win tonight, 
Alexander Usyk is the clear choice for Fighter of the Year in 2018. Yes. I'll, in fact, I'll fight you, Dave, if you've got a different answer to that, <laughs> because this guy has gone onto MME territory and put forth the kind of performances. That one you mentioned against Myris Bredis, that was the test. That was to see if he had a backbone. Did he have a chin? Could he fight on the inside if he needed to? Did he have a plan? C, D, and E. There's a reason why he's a pound for pound great right now. It's because of that performance and the shutout he pitched in the next one against Murat Gassiev. They take a look at the tail of the tape, a little bit of an edge of four inches for Usyk, and that could be enough. And you take a look at the career journey, 73% knockout percentage for Usyk, 61 for Bellew. Total rounds, about 100 rounds different. That uh, on the longer in the tooth for Bellew. You know, if you're looking at the stats, if you're looking at the things you're saying, how does Bellew have a chance here? Ultimately, this, this fight's easy to, to code in that regard. It's skill versus will. It's that undeniable will. But a key, though, to Bellew's past history in scoring these upsets has been getting in his opponent's heads, has been breaking them down mentally with trash talk. If you've noticed in this build, call it a language difference if you want, or call it maybe Usyk, a different kind of cat. Bellew has been unable to cross that line. Some have criticized him and said, look, you've been too friendly. The two of you hugged at the face-off at the weigh-in on Friday rather than have that type of push or that moment of intensity. Some guys you just can't crack. Usyk may be one of them. Some people thought that was the, are you in or are you out idea, that you didn't get mean with this guy. One, one foot out the door already. From one of the great boxing arenas in the world, Manchester Arena, Manchester, England, Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing proudly presents the main event of the evening in association with K2 Promotions and live on Sky Sports Boxing and exclusively to the United States on DAZN. This is it, 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed Cruiserweight Championship of the World. And it's sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, and JD Sports, and sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, steward in charge, board president, Charles Giles. Also recognized for a championship contest by the IBF, the WBA, the WBC, the WBO, and the Bible of Boxing Ring Magazine. Timekeeper at the bell, Chris O'Connor. The three judges scoring from the United Kingdom, Steve Gray. From Russia, Yuri Kopsev. From Mexico, Alejandro Lopez. And in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, championship veteran from the United Kingdom, Terry O'Connor. And now, the officials are ready. The fighters are in the ring, and they are ready. Fight fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer Dave Caldwell, wearing Everton blue and white, official weight, 14 stone, three pounds, five ounces. His professional record an excellent one in 32 fights, 30 victories, including 20 wins by knockout, two defeats, and one draw. Over the past five years, he's undefeated, winning 10 in a row, eight by knockout, undefeated as a cruiserweight. He's the fighting pride of Liverpool and all of the United Kingdom, the former cruiserweight champion. He's wearing white with gold and officially weighed in at 14 stone, two pounds. In 2012, in the London Olympics, he captured Olympic gold. And now, 
as a professional a perfect record. 15 fights, 15 victories, including 11 big wins by knockout, and he's ranked among the best as pound for pound, the best in the world. From Kiev, Ukraine, the reigning, defending, undefeated, undisputed, cruiserweight champion of the world, Alexander Pusi. And there is Bellu. You can feel the excitement. You can feel the intensity, Dave. And to quote the quirky Alexander Usyk, I am feel. I am very feel. Yep, there he goes for this final instruction. Well, you both in the change room. You know what to expect. Let's have a good, clean fight. Shake hands. Best of luck to both. God bless you. All right, the look of a predator in the eyes of Usyk. Promoter Eddie Hearn had a very apt statement at the press conference, said there will be peace in the cruiserweight division after Saturday, but before peace must come war for this fight to be a war. Tony Bellew is going to have to make sure his will is on the same level as Alexander Usyk's skill, and that's a tough battle for anyone. And that's why they have the fights, and that's why they have the big money, and so here we are. Well, we see the kind of statement that we saw in a fight like Mayweather Gotti against an aging, fun, brawling fighter where one skilled fighter made the kind of declaration that he's among the best in the world. Or will we truly see something special? Because as Bellew says, I can switch someone's lights out within one second, and that's what makes me dangerous. Here we go. Right. We sick the southpaw. Open up the right hand lead for Bellew, but now stylistically, how do you think he has to fight? Look, he's transitioned from a boxer to more of a puncher, but he still has that boxing skill. The problem is he's not going to be able to use it against the guy in the class of Usyk. It's going to come down to that big left hook. It's going to come down to finding ways to land that and finding ways to frustrate Usyk and get him off of his plan. What is Usyk's plan, you might ask? It's the jab. According to CompuBox, he lands 42.2 jabs per round, sorry, throws, which, by the way, is the largest among any fighter tracked by CompuBox and 20 more than the cruiserweight average. That jab for the southpaw Usyk has become a key part with the piston-like quality, the multiple angles, and setting up his offense. Never go wrong with the jab. Trainers continually say that. They hate when fighters don't use that advantage. Certainly with the contrast in stances with Usyk, the southpaw, Bellew, orthodox. It's going to open up opportunities potentially for Bellew with the right hand as well if he can time Usyk. Going to try to get that right hand lead in. Usyk very patient. You're seeing him essentially take a snapshot of what Bellew's willing to offer. You know, we've seen him pitch shutouts, uh, even though he's a knockout fighter. So we've seen him be able to do it that way, too. Well, Usyk not a big time, let's say, one punch knockout threat in the cruiserweight division, but can certainly get you out of there with accumulation and with what I call the frustration factor. His stable mate, his training partner, Lomachenko, is a lot like that, right? Hit you with punches you don't see coming, frustrate you to the point that you're in position to get hit with one shot that essentially slaps you, slaps you on the chin and snaps your will from you. And that can end a fight. Good jab here by Usyk. It's funny, both find, trying to find out about the other one. Neither one looking to necessarily commit, though, and show too much. This is a close to the vest opening round. And certainly and some of the crowd, Manchester crowd, minute. not happy with the lack of activity. They want nothing to do with the sweet science. They want 
these guys to open up, which eventually they will. And certainly Bellew wants to open up as well. We'll get that war. But in the first round, it's a discussion of terms. voice in Tony Bellew's Roger! corner. He was quoted as saying, there's just something inside of Tony that you can never bet against, that you can't teach, you can't train for. But if you listen to him, he's trying to get his fighter to land that right hand. And into round two we go. Alexander Usyk and Tony Bellew, undisputed cruiserweight championships on the line. Usyk, King Cruiser, 15 and 0, 11 knockouts. Dave Bontempo and Brian Campbell with you. More active start here in the second round for Usyk. Looking to find ways to land that jab. At the same height at six foot three, but Usyk a four inch reach advantage. You know, they're both trying to find what will be the difference. For Usyk, it's the, the jab, but in the bell you corner it's a hey, wait he hasn't really stung you with it he hasn't thrown those 40 jabs this round so go after him well they're going to need Usyk to be active to open up opportunities to counter with the big shots and that's something Usyk wasn't willing to give them in the opening round the thing about Usyk it's not a style you can necessarily prepare for or spar against a guy who comes in and will sidestep will, will come at you from such awkward angles also, tremendous hand speed for a guy this big. Also keeps his arm way out, extended, so it's not easy to get through that. You might have to knock it away to try to get inside, and that act may open you up. You can see the crowd really exploding anytime Bellew does anything. Landed a pair of jabs there, a right hand to the body. Manchester crowd starting to give him love. It was a good, sneaky, straight right hand by are you talking to him? He's talking to him, Dave. Has to get into his head. This is how Tony Bellew works you down. Not so much on the outside, but on the inside, mentally. Look, this is, there's a lot of chess in here physically. There's certainly a lot of chess mentally. Let's see how Usyk adjusts to that. Staying with the game plan, working that jab, walking him down. He got nailed once with the right hand, and then brought the crowd up. Usyk goes right back to the jab and tries to find what to do off of that. Very confident stuff here from Bellew in, in round two. Digging in, giving Alusik a lot to think about, coming at him from his own awkward angles. It's a good round for the bomber. Well, he's had a couple of signature shots. He's gonna walk away with the second round. Look at Bellew, look at him. I'd say I'm, uh, I'm pretty surprised here to see how well he was able to make Usyk mix and then come back with accurate punches. And here comes the psychological game. So animated. Right? 
Seconds out. Round three. Alexander Usyk and Tony Bellew, round three of 12. Undisputed Cruiserweight Championship held by Usyk. Usyk has already put together quite a historic Cruiserweight run when you consider he broke Evander Holyfield's record by winning his first title in his ninth fight, which is a Cruiserweight record. And you're talking about great Cruiserweights. Certainly Evander Holyfield fit that bill. Yes, and when you're talking about guys that were fighting world championship caliber opponents in the third and fourth oh. fights, and Lomachenko was uh, uh, like that. Yeah, they're just ahead of the rest of the class. And it, it comes in from their situations. amateur experience. I mean, this Ukrainian uh, amateur system has really produced some amazing fighters. It's the craft. It's the mental toughness. I mean, Usyk was asked in the buildup, you know, why no trash talk in this fight? And he says, because Bellew knows I'm crazier than he is. I mean, that's an interesting quote, quote right there. That's a counter Usyk. quote. That is a counter quote. Yeah, we see a, a little bit more of a subdued Bellew in the lead up this time. Usyk controlling distance well here though. Each time Bellew is about to commit to one of those right hands to the body. Usyk just taking a slight step back. Little Ole, get right back into the zone. But straight back, but not all the way straight. Then off to the angle, which is a smart thing for him. Oh, he's an abstract painter. He'll, he'll move in ways because he trains in ways that are just different. Oh, good shot by Bellew, the counter right hand. That has been his best punch so far. And it opens up here for Usyk to come at him, and there's a good straight left hand by Usyk. Well, you shakes his head, which of course means that landed firm. So the fight may finally be breaking out. One thing, though, I know Usyk is starting slow, but this has not been a obviously one-sided domination through two-plus rounds. We have a very interesting chess match. Did we think, Bell, you could play chess on this level? I'm not really sure. Certainly the odds makers didn't. No, the prohibitive underdog. And you'll know where he's really at if he finds an adverse moment and then he rises above that. I think there, that a lot of the odds maker implications were that he'd get in trouble and not get out. I think Usyk, you got to be careful in these rounds to uh, make sure you don't leave the door open. Make sure your output is there enough that the judges don't respond to the emotional nature of the crowd, which is going to explode every time Bellew does exactly that right there, the lead right hand, the least sneaky shots. The crowd will explode. If you're Usyk, you've got to pile up points, which means jabs, which means output. Sometimes, you know, what you put out there is, is perception is reality. And all that being said, which is true, Bellew doing a nice job with the right hand leads. Really fighting a smart fight. Good jab. Good work by Bellew with that right hand lead here. Look, let's not let's not bury the lead here. Three rounds in, Tony Bellew is not only alive, he's well in this fight. And not that we expected him to get, let's say, walked down in three rounds. But the fact that from a X's and O standpoint, he's in this, in this very much, giving Osik a lot to think about. We start round four. Alexander Usyk and Tony Bellew. Usyk is the undisputed cruiserweight champion and finding a pesky opponent in Bellew. Bellew has called this the most significant fight in cruiserweight history. He says it's the richest fight the division has ever seen. And he said, hey, credit Usyk for bringing the titles to the table, but I'm bringing the people, I'm bringing the money. It's also bringing the fight to the champion at this moment. He got, just got nailed with the left hand. And then he tries the gunslinger mode. Things getting a little wild in there. Usyk, though, starting to connect. Good right hand lead by Bellew. And now Usyk 
digging down and getting a little bit more. Like well, we, we mentioned, body shot. Yeah, Usyk took a snapshot early. There's going to be an adjustment period, but in the long haul, his skills should pay the bills, as they say, unless Bell you can land strong punches to dissuade him. In the meantime, you're waiting for the Usyk outburst. Got him cornered here, but still patient. He knows Bell use power. Clean right hand from Usyk in the corner. Excuse me, clean lead left. Back comes Bellew. With the jab by Usyk, and then he tried to get the left hand in, but Bellew answered. He knew when to stand up like and Usyk, not let the momentum yeah, get to him. Usyk's playing those angles really well. He's catching Bellew off balance in tough spot. But credit, Bellew is leaping right back into the frame with those right hands. Good left hand by Usyk and lands another good one. Look at the angles he's throwing from. Look at that accuracy. Look, that right hand from Bellew, though, has been able to consistently answer. He's showing a willingness to throw it and risk whatever will come back. And now Bellew clowning, leaning on the ropes, trying to get a new six head the best he can. Good body shot from Bellew. Usyk trying to close ground, but he's closing without throwing. Tell you what, if Bellew can have rounds like this, he's going to give himself an argument. Usyk is out, is you know the classier fighter in these exchanges, but when Bellew can answer with clean right hands, he keeps himself in these to win these rounds. And then it grows another dimension with the crowd in it and behind him. And that's what I talked about, the output of Usyk. If it becomes more of a chess match like this, you're going to compare which punches you prefer. All right, between rounds, let's throw to Nick. Yeah, thanks, guys. I've never seen Tony Bellew box with such intelligence and such poise. I gave him the first three rounds. That might have been Usyk's best round, that last one. But he got drawn into the kind of fight that Bellew would like it to be. Yes, he got some success there, as you saw. But Bellew wants him opening up unloading some big shots. The big thing that surprised me, especially through those first three rounds, is the Usyk jab, which is such a weapon, non-existent tonight. He's been tentative with it. I think he fears that left hook coming back over the top of it. And he's just been misfiring with that with, with that jab. If he's taken the jab away, that's a big, big asset for Bellew. And I'm just wondering if Bellew is now starting to mess with him mentally, because he's showing him no respect in there. Usyk's never had that in his whole career. Round five. All right, thanks, Nick. And that's a good point about Bellew getting into the head of Usyk. And we've seen some indications that might be right. You know, maybe the mental games began ahead of time when he said, there's no possible way I can outbox this guy. I only have a puncher's chance. He's staying with him on the boxing level in a very sneaky way. And I think a big part of that is the fear of his bigger punches coming over. It has taken away Usyk's jab, like, like Nick mentioned. Well, it would, it's interesting for any fighter to make Usyk think about the price of the jab and if he misses it and what comes back at him. He's usually the one putting the fear in his opponent about what might be coming back. Certainly, but he's so crafty, though, that if somebody's got a plan, E, F, G, H, on and on. It's certainly Alexander Usyk. Tell you, though, making him show it earlier than we thought. So Usyk continues to bring it, and Tell you continues to counter. There's an interesting angle from Usyk, and then cuts off the ring from the other side. Yeah, he's not really landing a lot of these jabs, but he's doing a much better this job this round using the jab to put Bellew where he wants him, cutting that ring off better. It's going to be hard for him to have the same level of success against a orthodox fighter with that jab, but he's finding better ways this round, although Bellew answers with a right hand. Good combination from Usyk in close. Bellew's going to shake his head every time. You know that, Dave. Yes, and there's a good left hand by Usyk, and... Well, you caught one on the exchange. He was in between. 
Look, you have to fear an opponent like Bellew, who's this mentally tough, who's not going to quit, who's going to simply find a way no matter what happens to him. And who might be crazy. Who, who really might be crazy, let's be honest, but crazy like a fox in all the good yes. ways. Because I talked about that transformation from boxer to puncher in these higher weight classes, but that craft is still there. And you mix all of that together with the level of where his confidence is at. And that's why you just couldn't count him out. Yes, the odds are what they are for a reason, but you just couldn't count him out coming in. And we're seeing that play out in front of us. And there's a three punch combination attempted by Usyk, which misses, but then he's back in position. There's the looping right by Bellew. Usyk much busier this round, really helping himself gain points, even though Bellew has, hey, he's stubborn with that right hand, Dave. He's finding ways to he answer is. it. He is, he's finding that right hand lead is there. So as Usyk is doing all the stalking, Bellew doing a good part of the landing. Derek, you were one of the few that gave Tony a chance in this fight. Is it uh, planning out how you thought it would? Yeah, for the first rounds, you know, Tony was coming with some big punches. And right now, he's kind of coming off his game plan. I don't know, I don't know why, but, you know, I, he's got a big punch in him because Usyk has felt the power already. So uh, we just know Tony, at any minute, he can just release that left hook. What were you shouting to him at the end of the round there? I was just shouting to let it go on a moment because he's staying in the pocket too long. So when he's in the, on the corner, he's not letting his shots go. What do you think Usyk can do to get back in it if uh, you have uh, Bellew ahead in this fight? Ah, Usyk needs a knockout. They both need a knockout. Because right now, I don't know, I, don't, I, I, I can't even score it right now. But do you get the impression Tony's ahead? Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. <laughs> seconds, seconds, Seconds out. All right, so we get ready round for round six. six and Derek Chisora said we uh, gave uh, Bellew a chance. He thinks in uh, the beginning of the, the week. Oh, good left hand early from Usyk. He liked what Bellew's work done. Look, I like Bellew to keep this fight closer than we thought coming in. Although through five rounds, I have Usyk up 48, 47. Some of these rounds are going to be tough to score, though, at this pace, this style, where Bellew keeping himself in the conversation with the clean counter shots as he keeps Usyk's output down. Although last round, round five, I thought Usyk's best of the fight. Good jab by Usyk. It was his best volume round, perhaps. Bellew caught him with some nice isolated shots. And that's the scoring quagmire the judges will find themselves in. That's why I think it's important for Usyk to really just pump that jab. Give the illusion that you are the busier guy, that you are the ring general. Now he's doing all the work here, cutting off the ring round after round, and he cuts it off instantly, then goes back at it again. Footwork is magical. It really is. You give him that credit. How many times is he able to get outside of Bellew's lead left shoulder and land one of those sneaky shots that you can't see coming? He's been doing a good job the last round and a half of using the angles and then scoring and blocking a little bit more from Bellew coming back at him by being in better position. But look, we're going to see scores all over the place. And some of it may be because Bellew is exceeding our expectations in these rounds. Some of it is the preference for these clean power shots. Either way, we got a fun fight here. We have a very interesting... We have a nice chess match here because it's a fast pace. They're both committed to a particular style in winning. But as it goes on objectively for Bellew, how perilous is the counter-punching route? If you commit to it and you're not doing enough in the rounds, again, you know, activity can sway so many, so many of these judges, but at its core, can Bellew keep up this dance for 12 rounds? I'm not sure. Eventually, sitting in and developing into a pure counter-punching role, knowing he's the bigger puncher, is seems inevitable for him. But look, when, you're, when you can sneak in right hands like that and remind the guy coming forward of what you can do, it's important. Bellew's got to find a way to turn this into more of a scrap. He tries to get that right hand lead through. I think he got Usyk's attention there with that right hand. 
Again. One more time. The trio. The triplets. Right hands. Bellew finishing strong. Right, right, right. Back at the start of this fight, that intense glare from Bellew, the counter right hands to get Usyk's attention. Although Usyk's been able to increase his output, those counter punches are still there in ways that I didn't necessarily believe would be at the midway point of the fight. Yeah, that's a solid right hand lead against the seasoned opponent. And let's not forget, I mean, he was a heavyweight in the two David Hay fights, moving back down in weight to cruiserweight and he seemed to make the weight fairly easily. Second half of this fight. Tony Bellew, 30 wins, two losses, 20 knockouts. Alexander Usyk, 15-0 with 11 knockouts. He's the undisputed cruiserweight champion. Dave Bontempo and Brian Campbell calling this for you. Glad you're enjoying this intriguing matchup. I got a three rounds apiece up to this point, Dave, at the midway point. Look, I think you could you could go as far as maybe 4-2 Bellew if you preferred. You could certainly go as far as giving Usyk the edge. It's that good of a fight. Yeah, storming start by Bellew, and then we see Usyk gathering himself and settling into the boxing domain, looking nothing like the guy who's been stopping everybody, but he's in with maybe a bigger man in a well, sense. You he's know, boxing. He's that's not his game though. The, the, he'll get knockouts and stoppages because of how accurate of a puncher he is. But his game is craft. And I think if you look in January when he outpointed Myris Bradis in Bradis' backyard of Latvia, there were so many ebbs and flows, so many adjustments that needed to be made in that bout. And Usyk showed such an advanced level of not just toughness, but game planning of being able to roll with the punches and find a way to get back and take the lead in the fight. Good left hand here by Usyk as he's got Bellew in the corner, not getting something back. This is one of the first times we've seen Bellew in the corner and not landing that lead right hand and giving Usyk more opportunity to work for the moment. You said it, that was a long stretch there without Bellew landing a shot until he was able to, to get out of there. You see Usyk, his brain forever calculating, finding his angles, having much success this round. Good head movement, cutting off the ring, staying outside of harm's way. This is a good way for him to try and outpoint Bellew, get rounds up. You look at, uh, you look at uh, Bellew looking to load up on that counter right hand, and it seemed like he just missed. Good defense. One for four got in. Good defense, though, from Musik to, to see that combination coming, knowing the end game of it, cover up before that right hand came in. Usyk continues to pressure Bellew, and there's no time off. Foot right back on the pedal. No chance for Bellew to relax. You know, and Usyk has sneaky power because he doesn't always throw full speed because he doesn't always need to. Sometimes there's setup punches, and then you'll see him let that big left hand go. But hey, decent close to the round for Bellew, but that was clearly, in my mind, an Usyk round. He only got hit once that round. He took it away from him really well. Big defense. Now, you had a round off, and he was still working. You have big day breath for me. Listen to me. Now, this is about how bad you want it. Right? Have a drink. This is your last fight. This is about... Good jab by Usyk. Kind of a signature element of the round for him. No question. It sets up so much for him. It's the angles that catches Bellew in awkward uh, positions he doesn't want to be. That round was certainly a snapshot of the type of rounds Usyk uh, would need to continue to, to, to get ahead on the scorecards. 
kind of adjustment, though, does Tony Bellew, the very, very gritty veteran, have? Can Bellew find a second wind, or has Alexander Usyk found the way to beat him? That's how we head into round eight, with uh, Usyk coming off a good round. You know, it's going to be up to Bellew to land something early here. Get, 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 get the respect back, as they say. Because the clean punches will accumulate as you see him eat a left hand as he backed up into the corner. A jab by Usyk. He's getting off first, pushing Bellew back. And I think however you have it scored at this point, it's clear that the momentum's shifting in Usyk's direction here. Yes, he has the needle moving in his way. And a lot of that is a smaller output by Bellew. Sort of settling into that counter-punching role we talked about. It was always going to be tough for him to keep up that level that he fought in some of those early rounds, as surprising as that was. But look, he's certainly not out of this. A lot of people are going to have these cards close, and he's still looking for angles to land big shots to change the momentum. Good right hand right there. Well, you're trying to get close enough to fire the left hook, and he eats one. And a good left hand by Usyk. So That's a dangerous clear punch. Shots. That's a dangerous punch for Bellew because it comes when Usyk gets on the outside of his shoulder where Bellew can't see that punch coming in clean. I think that one hurt him. And a good angle by Usyk as he tries to shift to the right and then drag that left hand back behind him and score. And then he nailed him right oh! the right down to Bellew. Two. Down he goes with the left hand. The momentum. We saw Usyk building up, and it's over just like that. Double kebab! Usyk defends all four cruiserweight world titles. In sensational instant fashion, we saw him breaking down Bellew. We thought that Bellew would hit his peak when he could find a way to make the second level. And Usyk, little by little, pouring it on and wins in definitive fashion. If that's the way Tony Bellew goes out at age 35 on his shield in a fight that he performed so well up to this point, you give him credit. Sure. But this was the showcase for Alexander Usyk in this short window, already showing you one of the special fighters of this generation, one of the better cruiserweights of all time, and now ready potentially to take those skills north to the heavyweight division. We saw... Remember, it was only a couple rounds ago, it, it seemed like Bellew was doing it tonight. Bellew was neutralizing him, right? Bellew was ahead of the cards. And then when Usyk found that mid-round gear, that was it. Wow, what a shot. And it was not It was one shot that ended the fight, Dave, but this round eight was a it was an accumulation of clean shots yes. that seemed to set Bellew up. A lot of those left hands from awkward angles, throwing them from the waist, almost a half uppercut, half hook. Bellew became open for those. They wore him down, and then that punch was gorgeous that ended the fight. And there were two just before that that was sort of a foreshadowing where we hadn't seen him get hit and frozen like that before. And then we did see the one-punch power. You know, that finish reminds me so much of his stablemate, Vasily Lomachenko. You remember that Roman Martinez fight yes, at Madison yes. Square Garden? One of the more beautiful two punch knockouts in a beautiful combination, but it was set up with those type of punches. Lomachenko, not a huge puncher, Usyk the same way, but when you have that craft, speed, accuracy, creativity to your game, you will create these opportunities. Dave, Usyk is a special fighter. And people are not going to be jumping in line in one sense because if you're scouting him for six rounds, you're saying, hey, I see vulnerability. I see where he ways he can get beat. And then all of a sudden, the fight's over. Yeah. Just like that. You, you, Look, you make one mistake, it's gone. They say Jimi Hendrix didn't play chords and notes, he played colors. This guy's an abstract painter in that regard. He's special. Uh, he's a very interesting threat for the heavyweight division. We know heading into this fight, he said, I'm on the way to Anthony Joshua. Wow, buddy, that's a big statement. But at six foot three, with that type of craft, maybe put on a little bit more weight and muscle. Wow, with that type of speed. Business picking up at heavyweight, which we already knew. Fury Wilder on the horizon. Anthony Joshua standing tall. Is this another player in this renaissance era of boxing's glamour division? Who wants it? That was 
a fantastic finish. I mean, tell me the truth, Dave. Are you feel? Are you very feel after Usyk's oh, knockout yeah, right we're, there? We're, we're, we're double feel here, you know? Kell Brook is giving love and praise for what was a spectacular performance. All the belts. All the belts. Hey, if there was a night, when you're looking at six rounds, if there was a night where it looked like Usyk might get out hustled or overtaken, it looked like that was the night. I mean, and this really sudden, was, you know, arguably the toughest challenge of his career. No no disrespect to Myris Brightus, but I had it 67-66 Usyk at the time of the stoppage. Quick glance at social media, you see more than a few people had Bellew ahead. This was that good of a fight, that dangerous of a challenge. But Usyk took the snapshots, stuck to his game plan, began to figure out the angles. Wow. Won't be remembered that it was a uh, gradual beatdown. It was boom. After everything. Look at that left hand. Bellew out as he dropped. Tries his best to, to come back to life in ways we've seen him do it, both inside and outside the ring, to resurrect his career. The three good shots oh. have gotten in, and then remember the looping shots before this. And, and he turned right this. off, right off the seat to help Bellew. You know they have a special relationship as promoter and fighter, but look at this finish. Okay. Now watch him get into this, all of it. I mean, that was wide, too. That was a looping shot, but he does it with such poise, control, accuracy. Now you have to watch the power generating through the hips as he does that, and he maintains his punching power. Okay. Jeb, boom. Whew. This guy's taking souls out here. And he was far out when he landed that, too. It's really a special fight, and I don't, I don't mean to overplay the idea of this guy going up and shaking the heavyweight division up, but it's in play when you have this type of skill set in that type of body. Well, you could think that he could beat some heavyweights right off the bat, so then it's a matter of, well, how much he can improve. And the, that's the cruiserweight scenario. It's a division in which you're stuck. Hard to go down. And the money is up. And look, before, he, Usyk's performance in that World Boxing Super Series tournament should have been his coming out party in the U.S. Unfortunately, it had no U.S. TV. Moving forward, we know the WBSS exclusively on zone in the U.S. That should have been his face-turning moment. This certainly is for anybody that wasn't woke on Usyk coming in. undefeated and still the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world from Ukraine, Alexander. Where do you end the superlatives? Can we go to the level of what the great Larry Merchant said about Manny Pacquiao after the Cotto win? Usyk, we knew he was great coming in. He's better than we thought. He might be bordering on that. I think he might have to go a little bit more, but this was terrific in the way he finished this fight. Ukrainian Olympic gold medalist, just 16 pro fights, Dave. It's it's, yes. it's remarkable the, the transition he's made on the pro level, the command, the control, and look at Tony Bellew, the hog, the kiss with Eddie Hearn. What a career. If this really is the end, Dave, you, you almost want to pause the Usyk hype train to say, Tony yes. Bellew, thank you for making this fight as special as it was. Yes, because he took a fighter who's in the fight one minute, maybe even winning, and then it's over. Done with one shot after the talk about the cumulative shots and there hadn't been one punch power. All of a sudden, there's two good shots, two more close, and the bomb. And you see the emotion already outpouring out of Bellew. I mean, he's a guy who's been quoted before and saying, it, if Tony, I'm not punching in the face, I don't know what I'm doing It's not life. the fairy tale ending you so desperately wanted, but can you be proud of your performance tonight? I tried my best. I gave it everything I've got. Make sure you clap him, because he's an exceptional fighter, and he deserves all the awards in the world, man. Alexander Usyk is a great, great champion, and I lost to 
one of the pound for pound best that's ever done. He's fantastic. He beat me fair and square. I have no excuses. He's an amazing fighter. Alexander. 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 He is a great champion. The greatest man I've ever shared the ring with. Thank he you. He deserves all the success in the world. I only wish you greatness. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Manchester. Great beat. And I love you. Thank you. Alex, if you can stay, I'm just going to finish with Tony and we'll come to you as the victor. Rachel, sorry to, sorry to interrupt this. You were ahead. You were ahead on two of the three scorecards. Yeah, man. You seem to grow tired. Uh, no, I tried to go for it. I tried to get him because I thought I might have been behind, but I don't know, man. I don't even know what round it was. What round was it? Eight. Yeah, it's only eight, man. There's so many more to go, but I don't even know what he caught me with. He's a brilliant fighter. He's so hard to pin down, and then when you nail him, he's good at it. He's exceptional, man. He's Olympic gold medalist, European amateur world champion. He's done everything. I fought the very, very best. He's just better than me. Just accept it, man. You come up against great people in life, and sometimes you lose, you've just got to accept it. Alexander Usyk, his pound-for-pound material, man, I've got none, but great things to say about him. He's the best I've ever fought. He's slick, he's strong, and he's exceptional, and he gave him his credit. I tried to, I can't even remember what round that was. Eight. Round eight, so I tried to put my foot down. I don't, I don't even remember half of the fight, so. Fair play, man. He's an exceptional champion. I have nothing but respect for him. Anyone who faces him is in a lot of trouble. Only the very best and only the very biggest will find a way to beat him. He's great. You achieved what only many can dream of. You won a world title at Goodison Park. Is that the highlight for you as you walk away? Yeah, man, of course. I won at Goodison Park. This man was a massive part. He believed in me, he stuck by me, he made Goodison Park happen. I can only thank him for the now, listen, don't boo him, don't boo him. He's a great fighter, I appreciate him. He beat me fair and square. He's just a great fighter, but for Eddie, thank you. He, Eddie Ian stuck by me all the way, and I've had some ups and downs, but I chose to do this one more time, and it hasn't worked out, man. He's an exceptional fighter, Alexander Usyk. I only wish greatness for him. I know now why he's so great, European world, Olympic gold medalist. Unified champion. I tried my best, and but I'm just not. I'm a, I'm a world class fighter. That's the difference between world class and, and elite level. It's heartbreaking, man, because I gave this everything I possibly had, but it didn't work out. So, Alexander, I only wish you well. You are a great, great champion. Is that the end for you? Oh, it's definitely the end. Come here, Alexander. <laughs> You are a great, great champion. Thank you. The best person I've ever shared the ring with. So tactically brilliant, strong. He has everything. I only have praise for him, and you are a great, great champion. And I only wish him well. So, the good champions, they become with a good opposition. Only this way. In many ways, did he bring the best out of you tonight? Наверное, сегодня, да. Maybe today, yes. Today. Maybe today, yes. yes. <laughs> you came with the belts, you leave with the belts. Were you surprised that Tony starts in the fight? Ты приехал с поясами, уезжаешь с поясами. Ты был удивлен началом поединка, то, как вел себя Тони? No. Я ждал этого. Я ждал этому парню нечего терять. Ты ощущал, что ты медленно его ломаешь? Ну, может быть, я промолчу. I would rather keep silence. <laughs> Let's talk about your future. You achieved everything possible as an amateur. You've came here, you leave as undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. Is it heavyweight next? Давай поговорим о твоём будущем. Ты олимпийский чемпион, ты undisputed champion cruiserweight. Что дальше? Heavyweight? 
Знаете, что я на данный момент хочу? Я провел очень сложный год. Сложнейший, наверное, год, который у меня был. Я на данный момент хочу максимально отдохнуть со своей семьей, детьми и поправить свое здоровье. А тогда мы можем о чем-то разговаривать. Alex Krasiukir also acting as promoter here as well. All the talk in the build-up has been if Alexander was to be victorious, would he come back and fight Anthony Joshua or one of the other British heavyweights? What's your reaction to that? <laughs> I can tell by your smile. Uh, with this man standing right next to me. Eddie. Eddie. Um, Eddie. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Hearn. Yeah, we can do much in boxing. And uh, bringing Usyk to heavyweights will bring some new spirit to heavyweight division and he definitely needs to fight Anthony Joshua. What adjustments would you make to your style and your approach moving up to heavyweight? Конечно. Я еще буду дополнительную порцию макарошек кушать и вообще будет все кульно. Yeah, of course it's enough. I will have uh, another extra Pasta for dinner. <laughs> Is that your your goal now to uh, become undisputed heavyweight champion? Yes, if you have a goal to become champion of super tiger. Конечно, нужно ставить себе цели. Вы понимаете, мы люди, если мы не ставим себе цели, если мы не не двигаемся, мы просто основной мы мы трухнем, мы умираем. Мы должны ставить себе цели и идти к ней. We are just uh, common human beings. We need to put. Uh, goals in front of us and we need to go towards them to move towards them just finally you obviously enjoyed yourself here in the uk how do you reflect on the whole experience uh, вообще я очень великолепно провел время в королевстве я вообще знаю весь центр я его весь обходил фанаты Люди просто останавливали меня, фотографировались. Куча, большая толпа людей останавливала меня, фоткалась. Мне вообще, если честно, нравится в Британии, потому что я здесь завоевал. Моя мечта здесь сбылась, моя цель сбылась в, Ло... в Британии. Это олимпийское золото. А сейчас я уже боксирую здесь профессионалом. Это же офигенно. I did enjoy my stay in the UK. Uh, now I know the city center of Manchester because I walked it <laughs> across through. And uh, act, uh, my best love country is England because uh, most of my dreams came through here. I became the Olympic champion in London and now I'm fighting here for the undisputed championship in Cruiserweight. I love this country.